this world. The Bible tells us that um, it's in uh, 2 Timothy. In 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, All scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that we, the people of God, may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And I thank God for that, for his word. Okay, let's, let's start here in Hebrews. We're talking about the word of God. I want you to turn with me to Hebrew. Hebrew chapter 4, 11 and 12. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desire. And you know, it reminds me about what Je uh, Jeremiah said back in uh, the Old Testament. He said, the heart is deceitful above all. Who can know it? Only God. So that's why the word of God comes into our heart. You see, uh, uh, Moses gave the law. But Jesus fulfilled it. And we, we're going to talk about how he fulfills the law. Okay. And um, it says, even back to Hebrews, it says, even the dividing the sunder of the soul and the spirit. For the spirit, the higher part of man, the higher part of us, is receptive of the spirit of God, the heavenly things. Okay. And it talks about how it even goes down to the joints and the marrow, how the word cuts deep down there, both the joints and the marrow. Christ knows, see, what's in a man. He knows. God knows what's in us. We don't, but he knows. So his word reaches as far as the most intimate and accurate knowledge of man's most hidden part. Feelings and thoughts dividing that in a, in a way that, to a degree that we could never do. We could never do this. This is a spiritual work that has to be done. I was talking about that yesterday. We had a conference, and I was talking about how the Word of God will go in and find you, <laughs> you know, things and bring forth things in you that you didn't even know that was there. But God will show you what's in you and what you should deal with, what you should work on. You remember the children of Israel? They were out in the wilderness for 40 years so God could test them and try them to see what was in their heart okay as a knife of the leviticus priest that reached to divide these parts closely that you did you know the uh, the animal remember they put the animal on the altar and they took a knife the priest did in the old testament and cut between the joint and the marrow closely unit you know dividing these joints of the limb and penetrating to the innermost parts as the as of the marrow so the word of god divides the closely jointed parts of man's innermost beings dividing the soul and the spirit and penetrating to the innermost parts of the spirit i'm going to jump over here to the parables really quick because this is a beautiful illustration and jesus talked in parables and uh, this different accounts but i like the account of, of mark mark one uh i'm sorry mark four and it talks about it said one day jesus walked with the disciples and jesus began to teach the parables these parables were short stories to show the truth of the gospel as jesus said into the boat he told them about a farmer who went out you know to sow seed and field and different stories okay and one day, he said, a sword took a bag of grain. I like this. He said, a sword took a bag of grain and went out into his field. He walked back and forth across the field, scattering handfuls of seeds, you know, around the ground. As the grains fell, you know, a little breeze probably helped scatter the seed, okay? Some seeds blew into the road or on the sidewalk. When the birds saw the seeds, Lying there, they blew, they flew down, and they ate them, okay? 
They flew down and they ate the seed. So watch out for the birds. <laughs> when the birds saw that them lying there, you know, they just right away just started eating them. Other, other seeds fell on stony places and began to grow. But the soil was so shallow that the, you know, the plant soon withered and dried up. Okay? And we've got to talk about why it dries up. It don't have any water. <laughs> okay? Some seeds fell on thorny grounds, thorny places. And the thorns grew so fast that they choked out the good seed. Hmm. But not all the seeds were wasted. Thank God. Many of them fell on good ground. There they sprouted and sent their roots into the rich soil. See, they got deep, deep roots. After a time, uh, after a time, they grew into stalks and grains. The stalks produced many more seeds. Then were just gen then just uh, was scattered on the ground. Okay, some fields produced thirty times more, some sixty times more, and some even a hundred times more. The disciples wondered what the story meant. Hmm. It was like saying, I, can you imagine? <laughs> Why is Jesus telling us these stories instead of preaching a sermon? Huh? So, anyway, when they climbed back into the boat, they asked him, Why are you teaching the people with these parables, Jesus? <laughs> and Jesus answered, Because I know you will try to find out what the story means. Others who hear the story will not try to understand the meaning because their hearts are not open to God's message. Hmm. Then Jesus explained to the disciples what the stories of the sower was about. The sower, he said, is a person who speaks the word of God. The different kinds of soul represent the ways people act when they hear God's message. You see, the seed is the Greek word sperma. Like the English word we get sperm, the seed is the sperma. The ground represents the heart, okay? That's where conception takes place. And he said, if a person's heart is hard and they're not ready, they can't conceive. There's no conception, okay? And so, yeah. The, um, he speaks to them uh, in, in parables in different parables all through you know you can read these parables and I just love these parables and he says those who hear it but do not try to understand are like the roadside where the seed falls just as birds flew down and ate these seeds the evil one comes and the people forget the message they have heard hmm and I've heard that too too. People, you ask them, uh, what did it, what, what, what was preached today? You know, what was the word? You know, and they could tell you everything else, but they can't tell you what the word was. I can tell you what so and so wore, or you know, this and that, but they can't tell you what the word was because the enemy right away stole it. Those who listen gladly to God's word but do not obey them are like the stony ground. As soon as the seed falls down. On the ground, it grows for a little time, but it doesn't have, you see, that deep root, you know? And soon as something come up, it's gone, okay? Those who believe God's word in their heart, but allow trouble and money and pleasures and cares of the world, it kind of just, it just crowds it out, chokes the word, chokes the seed, okay? But those who hear and obey God's word, are like good ground. Here, the seed here, where the seed fall and the sprout grows, and you know it produces much, much grain. Isn't that beautiful? And that's what God wants. He wants us to be producers. Okay, like I said, the seed is is it's a word sperma, and that's when. Production is supposed to happen, and that's what God wants us to do. Just start producing. And when you abide fully in Christ, results, uh, oh, wow, the results is awesome. I mean, you have 
fruit just flowing. <laughs> you know, it overflows. You overflow with happiness as Christ gets, you know, more completely possession of our soul. It enters into such a joy. You know, we were talking about that joy of the Lord, too, that joy that just, you know, is our strength. His own joy, the joy of heaven, becomes our own. And that in in a full measure, full measure, okay? Just as joy on the earth is everywhere connected with the vine and the fruit, so joy is essential. See, it's essential characteristic of the life of a believer. God wants us to have fullness of joy. We know the value of joy, okay? It alone is the proof. That what we have really satisfies, satisfies the heart. See, that's what the heart longs for is joy. Not that false happiness or that, you know, that moment of pleasure. But God wants us to have full joy. Joy, unspeakable joy. Filled with glory. When we abide in Christ, you know, the penetration of that joy just overflows all our faculties, you know producing those characters of Christ. Like I said, Jesus fulfilled the law. Moses gave the law, but Jesus fulfilled it. And when we accept Jesus in our in our hearts, when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, that's when that word goes to work in us. In the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was with God. That word goes to, to work in our heart. Mm. Whether we look backwards and see the work he has done or upward to see the reward he has in the Father's love, which passes all understanding, which passes all knowledge. I tell you, the word of God is so beautiful and we need to stay in the word. You know, because um, the Lord had showed me, uh, gave me like a little illustration, a parable, I guess you could say, where it was a big spread, you know, a table, like a buffet of things that he wants me to do and all of us to do. See, God has called you with, with purpose. You know, you, you're not an accident. You're here on this earth for a reason, you know, and we get that purpose and plan from our heavenly father because he is our creator after all he created us and he created us with a purpose but all laid out is like um, different things that he wants us to have in our life and different things that he wants us to do in our life in this life okay he said eyes haven't heard eyes haven't seen ears haven't heard the good things that God had prepared for those who love him but yet it's revealed through the Holy Spirit okay Little by little, he'll reveal those things. Remember in Habakkuk, it says, uh, write the vision down, make it plain, though it tarry, wait on it. Okay? At the appointed time, it will happen. As this table is spread with all these different things there, you know, you could say, well, you get a glimpse of it, and then it goes away like lightning. You know, you see it, but then it's gone. You know, but God wants you to know it's still there. But it's appointed time. See, that work, the word has to go to work in your heart, you know. And more you decrease, the more he'll increase. The Holy Spirit will start showing you things and bring you into your purpose. And, and with purpose come rest. And that's why, you know, Jesus said, I come to give you rest, okay. You can't, just like a king. A king has to have rest in order to rule. And that's what God wants to do. Bring us to that place of rest. And that comes only by abiding in the word of God. Okay? Daily abiding in the word of God. Being like that tree planted by the rivers and rivers of water. Can't nothing move that tree. Okay? Let your roots get deep and deep and deep. And so eventually those plans that God have, that table that spread it, you know, you'll just, he'll just walk you right into that, you know, just uh, be a, a easy flow, you know, like, uh, like Jesus said, you know, I give you rest, you know, a, a, a easy, burnt, light and easy, you know, the yoke is, is not heavy, 
your burden will be very light. And he'll bring you into those purposes. But that comes through abiding and staying in the word of God. And he'll bring you that to that place. Because like I said, the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. Cutting between the soul and spirit. Between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. See, God must work on us in order to bring, uh, to make us fruitful to, for this world. Because God said, walk in the light as I am in the light. And the blood of Jesus constantly cleanses us from all unrighteousness. You see, God is doing a work in you. When that seed takes place, mm, 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 when it falls on good ground, it can't help but produce. And that's what we're, we're to do. Be producers of God's fruit, God's good plan for our life. Just let him in. And if it's anybody out there and you don't know the Lord, I just ask that you just, you can just, like I always say, it's no special formula. All you have to do is open up your heart to him. Now, um, you've tried everything else, try Jesus. Okay? Just say, Jesus, I want to know the plans and purpose of my life. I repent from the things that I'm doing, the way I'm doing things. I want you to be Lord and Savior of my life. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you arose again. Just come into my life. Be Lord of my life. I want that joy that she's talking about. Lord, I've been looking for love in all the wrong places. I want the joy, the unspeakable joy, filled with glory. And you know what? If you said that little prayer and those words, you're in. And if you really mean it, you really want him to be Lord and Savior of your life, he will not deny you. That's what he wants. That's why Jesus died, to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Moses gave the law, and Jesus will fulfill that law in you because the law had a demand, and Jesus fulfilled that demand. I thank God for the word of God. It's powerful. It's living. It's alive. It's going to work in your life and in your heart. Yes, God is going to show you things. He's going to lay down a pat. Uh, um, uh, like I said, he's going to put a spread before you <laughs> and show you things that's to come. But at the point in time, you will be able to walk right into those things. But wait on God. You know, get rooted and grounded in the Lord. Let your roots go deep, deep, deep into him. Okay? And trust him. Don't be like the children of Israel. You know, God brought them out of the wilderness. If you receive Christ in your life, God has brought you out of the wilderness, but he's going to bring you into a place of rest. Don't give up. Don't give in. You see, when you're in the wilderness, there's going to be a lot of things that's going to happen there. But know that Jesus is with you. Okay? He loves you. He said he'd never leave you or forsake you. You're just going. It's only a test. A lot of times I had to tell myself, it's only a test. It's only a test. God wants you to be victorious in this life. Okay, God has a plan and a purpose for you. God wants you to rule and reign with him forever and ever. Okay, so when you're going through these trials and these little tests here, you know, just know that he's with you and he's going to see you to the other side of that. Okay, and just like Jesus, he was, when he, um, after he fasted in the wilderness, I, I seldom talk about this because I want you to know that that's where a lot of people's plans get aborted. Okay? After he went to, uh, after he had the 40 days of fasting, he was tested by the enemy. The Holy Spirit took him to be tested. <laughs> but you know, he passed every one of them. That's why we, we're redeemed. He, he, he paid the price. See? He didn't give in to the enemy. So you're going to be tested in the wilderness. Don't be like the uh, the children of Israel. God brought them out for testing. Their clothes didn't wear out. He was there with them all the time. He fed them. He loved on them. You know, but they kept complaining and, and you know, things like that. 
So don't complain. Just know that God is with you, okay? And he loves you so much. 